everybody. Thank you all for being here tonight. I appreciate you for coming out. Um, we're going to be talking about sleep. So I hey. hope you guys are excited. Um, we're going to try to make it uh, entertaining, though, at the same time, so you don't fall asleep while you're here, you know, <laughs> listening to me. I'm sure I'm going to try to make it as, as entertaining as possible. Pretending it'll be beneficial. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. There you go. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. So, uh, what happens while we sleep? So, uh, before we start talking about kind of like what happens when you don't sleep and and all these other things, uh, how to get better sleep, we want to know what sleep is, why it's even important, right? So. Their sleep happens in stages. So the first stage, they call it N1, is light sleep, right? So you're kind of getting into, into the rhythm of things. You guys are familiar with this? Uh, N2, body temperature drops and you disengage from your surroundings. That's when you start to kind of go away into that other area of consciousness that, that is a, a, little, a little bit deeper. And then the, sta the third stage is deep sleep. Now this is the interesting thing. This is uh, where the actual tissue grows and repair happens, okay? You want the most of this as possible, okay? The deep sleep. You guys heard of this? The, so there we go. Deepest sleep, restorative sleep. Blood pressure drops, slow breaths, your muscles relax, and here's a really big important one. Tissue growth and repair. Mm -hmm. So if we're talking about the most important thing that sleep is needed for, it's for tissue growth, for tissue repair. If you're trying to heal your body and your body's not, if you're not sleeping properly, what ends up happening? Are you, be, are you going to be able to regenerate the way you're supposed to? Of course not, right? So this is the most important thing, and that's why sleep is so, so critical for your health. Energy restores itself. So this is where you're supposed to wake up in the morning, or roughly, and actually have energy for the next day. You're supposed to be getting it from when you sleep. Um, and growth hormones release, so that's where you're actually growing as a person, right? So an REM would be the fourth stage. Rapid eye movement happens every 90 minutes and provides energy to the brains and dreams occur. One of the other things that happens in your sleep, and I'm not, I'm not sure if I put it on there, is you, you go through this period which is called, uh, which is called glymphatic drainage. So you have, you've heard of the lymph system inside of your body, this part of your body? That's where like the, the bacteria and all the kind of those things are go, go through your body and they end up going and excreting out through your, your, like through your feces and stuff like that, right? With your brain, you have that same system. Bad things get up there, just re, like um, any kind of bacteria, anything that gets up there could actually be removed through the, through your whole, we'll call it your glymphatic system, okay? So this is important. Benefits of a good night's sleep. So we just talked about them a little bit, but supports a healthy immune system. So making sure that your immune system functions properly. Who thinks that's important? Ah, uh, yes, yeah, very important. Growth and repair of the body, we talked about that. Sets up energy for the next day, we talked about that. Uh, healthy metabolism by affecting the hunger hormones, ghrelin and leptin, okay? So and this is an interesting one, all right? If you're not sleeping properly, these hormones are gonna be interrupted. So what does that mean? You're going to get hungrier more often, and you're not going to be able to digest it, the food as well as, as you should. Okay? So what does that mean? And your metabolism also slows down. You're going to get heavier? So you're going you're to gain weight from this, right? So that's obviously not a good thing because we know that the, if you're obese or, or even overweight, that's, that negatively affects your health, correct? Mm -hmm. um, one third of life here, so here, so as far as sleep, one third of your life here determines how the other two thirds are lived out as well as health and longevity, right? So how you sleep one third of your life, that's a whole, it's kind of crazy, right? How you sleep one third of your life, it's gonna affect the other two thirds, right? So it's important that we get the most sleep possible. Did I hook you? Did I, did I get you wanting to have a really good night's sleep? All right, cool. All right, so let's see. Now how much sleep we need, do we need? These are that like some from this National Sleep uh, Foundation. They talked about just different recommendations for different people. So we're going to go into some of those right now. Of 65 years old, recommend seven to eight hours. Maybe appropriate five to nine hours. But I'm just going to kind of go through these pretty quickly. Adults. Uh, 18 to 64 years old, 7 to 9 hours, 6 to 11 might be okay. Teenagers, 14 to 7 years old, 8 to 10 hours. Now, I'm just going to kind of, uh, in general, they've done studies on this. About seven hours, if we're just going to make it a general statement, about seven hours is, is the is the ideal range for health. Okay, so they've they've also done studies on just longevity. Um, 
six hours, the people that live the longest generally tend to live about six hours, or sorry, sleep six hours a night. Um, They've done some studies where saying, okay, it might be that this, those people that only get six hours are just healthy. Need as much sleep. Does that make sense? So, because what happens when you're sleeping is it's supposed to be restorative, right? So, if you don't have as much to repair at nighttime, maybe you don't need as much sleep. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, uh, it, it, I don't know if it's that's kind of like one of those cookie or, or sorry, the egg or the chicken kind of thing, like which one yeah. came first. Um, but in general, six to s uh, seven hours is a good sweet spot for most people. So that's kind of what I would like you guys to aim for. Okay, women do need more sleep. Um, so that's so maybe seven to eight hours if you're if you're a woman. Okay. Because we work more, right? Uh, <laughs> just I'm not. We're, 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 I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear. That that one okay so I'll just, <laughs> all right so uh, th so now we know that sleep's important um, we know why it's important so how do we know if we're getting enough sleep so th there's plenty of things called sleep trackers out there uh, you were talking about one earlier your bed came with it right <laughs> so, so the sleep no yeah it's sleep number so sleep number what it do what it does is it, it will determine how much movement you're doing on top of your bed so obviously when you're sleeping you're, you're body actually goes into a, a state of uh, almost paralysis, right? So, sorry. It's okay. So uh, that green is all restless sleep, those yellows is how restless I was. So yeah. more of a lighter sleep. If, if you have any red. What do you want it to be? You want it to be green. If you have red, oh, okay. that means you're out of bed. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So, that's, so that's pretty much it. So it, what it's doing is it's measuring how much movement you're doing at nighttime. That's one of the, one of the ways you could track sleep. There are other things out there, which uh, this thing called an aura ring. So it's a, actually a a ring that you put on your finger looks like that. Actually, um, the like different levels of hormones inside your body, things like that. And I'm not, I'm actually not sure exactly how this thing works, but it can give you a pretty uh, interesting printout of exactly how you're sleeping throughout the night. And so, if the temperature drops, would it be that too? Yeah, so it measures temperature, but I think blood pressure, heart rate, a lot of other things that okay. it's actually measuring yeah. to, to, to get you a good determination of how actually you're sleeping throughout the evening. Um, more unsophisticated things like uh, the Fitbit, same kind of thing. Thing, tracking movement, right? Uh, iPhones have it, or most most phones have some sort of sleep tracker nowadays. You could just look on your phone, you put it next to your bed. Although we're going to talk a little bit about that um, a little bit later and why that might not be the best option for you. Okay, so so now we know, yeah, right. So definitions of, of insomnia. So now we know why it's important. Why uh, what what happens with insomnia or definitions of insomnia? It's called habitual sleepiness. So you're you're asleep all the time. Usually these people tend to be in bed for about 14 hours or something like that a, a night just trying to get sleep and they just don't they don't sleep well uh, it's the inability there's one one thing is the inability to fall asleep right that's the person that's you know you're in bed you're you're lying there anybody having trouble sleeping by the way I'm just curious what the what, what, what our range is here so inability to fall asleep so you're sitting there you're li you're lying you're, you're looking around and you're, you're not able to fall asleep things are thoughts are racing things like that um, there's two types Types of insomnia there's acute and there's chronic right so a lot of people can get these acute type of insomnias where you know like you maybe you have like a particularly stressful thing that's happening in your life that's usually what's called situational right a stressful environment or maybe you go to an environment that you're not used to sleeping in so like going into like a hotel or something like that where you're just not used to the environment that could be one way that you might have like this uh, acute insomnia uh, chronic three or more days per week for at least three months. So it's gotta be a, a, a long habit. Now it doesn't mean you can't get rid of it, it's just something that's been going on for a while. Usually you earn this, okay? When I mean you earn this, it's your lifestyle creating the insomnia. So we're going to talk a little bit about what those, what the situations that we create for ourselves and why we're not able to sleep. Because we're a human species, correct? Right? Or we're just, we're just another animal species. Is there any other, do, you, do we do we know of any other species on the planet that has trouble falling asleep or sleeping throughout the night without like CPAPs and things like this? No. Right? <laughs> so, so, so we're creating this through our lifestyles. So we're going to, we're going to talk about uh, what those things are that we're doing. 
Now, who is affected by this? So five, so the insomnia, 5% of the population, or in, in other words, 50 to 70 million people in America. Um, now, of those people, two to 6% use medications to treat insomnia. We're gonna talk a little bit about like, uh, like the, what happens when we use those medications, side effects, things like that. Uh, two times more likely for women than men. And uh, I didn't get the exact um, reason for this, but I think maybe women just feel emotions more than, than men do. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Uh, sleeping 20% less than 100 years ago. So this is the trend right now. We're, we're, more insomnia is happening more and more and more. And we're going to talk a little bit more about what's happening, why this is occurring. Um, but it's happening. Uh, well, I went to the, all the way to the other side. How did that happen? Let's go. I didn't even know how I did that. That was pretty cool. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Let's get, okay, here we go. So here's some of the consequences of sleep deprivation. What happens when you don't sleep well or you get chronic insomnia? Uh, used, so this is actually used as an effective torture technique. Have you guys heard about these in different countries? They keep people up for days on. And that's an effect, effective torture technique. It destroys the body. And there, here's some of the things it does. It releases stress hormones, right? You're, it elevates your blood sugar and your cholesterol levels, so it can lead to an increase of diabetes, hypercholesterol, weakens your immune system, right? Because obviously that's not a good thing. Uh, reduce healing and digestion, higher disease rates overall, and accelerated death, so you die faster if you don't sleep. Um, why? Because here's what happens. So here's here's the formula for health versus you're breaking down faster than you're building up your tissues in your in your in your body. What's that? What's that called? That's disease, right? That's your body breaking down. If the vice, if the other, so if you're building up tissues faster than you're breaking it down, you're healthy, right? Living a long, healthy life. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. So you could accelerate your death because if you're not rebuilding your tissues, your aggravates chronic pain so and then raised blood pressure so if you're not sleeping well these chronic issues are going to be further and further aggravated okay so more uh, so things that you can be possibly exposed to or, or more at risk of cancer diabetes so the, the list is pretty much everything any kind of st chronic stress disease this is the, the list that it's at right cancer diabetes obesity memory loss alzheimer's parkinson's ms gastrointestinal disorders kidney disease stomach ulcers constipation depression right aggravated if you're not getting proper sleep okay so obviously it makes sense that we'd want to get sleep so other sleep disorders so we talked about insomnia thing uh, other sleep disorders or obstructive sleep apnea have you guys heard of this mm -hmm. so where usually where the the airwaves are not getting you're not getting proper airwaves and so you're you're waking up in the middle of the night you're not you're not breathing throughout the night there's reasons for that right we're gonna talk some let's talk about those in a second uh, chronic fatigue old age obesity is a big one so if you got a lot of weight pushing down on your chest and you're not able to fully fully respirate or fully get a full uh, in, uh, engaged lung right that's gonna make it so you're not gonna breathe as well Does this make sense uh, that could also lead to snoring uh, we're also going to talk about chiropractic for what it, what chiropractic can actually do a little bit later too um, very good and yeah so snoring we'll talk a little bit about snoring so uh, what happens in snoring is you can't move air freely through the nose and the throat while sleeping it causes tissue in the upper respiratory tract to vibrate so you get that kind of sound right uh, caused by blocked nasal passages so these are some of the causes of, of, of snoring as well and we're going to talk about all of these things now this is what our bodies run off of okay when it comes to our sleep and what and how we go through these sleep cycles so have you anybody heard of this thing called a circadian rhythm so what does it mean it means that the sun comes up in the morning and eyes perceive that light and that starts our cycle that starts our sleep cycle so we all we all have these cycles of rise with the sun and 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 go to sleep with it does this make sense that's a circadian rhythm most of us fall pretty much right in the middle of that like let's say like 70 percent of us rise and fall with the sun some people are programmed to wake up earlier some people are programmed genetically to stay up later okay there they have been studies on this it's called uh, uh, chrono your chronotype okay so chrono meaning 
time chronotype. So and we're, we're gonna do, we'll just have a little tangent on that. They were, they were thinking that the people that stay up later, back in our, we we'll call it they would. They were the ones that were up at night watching out for predators, right? And then you had to have. They were like the shift. They were. They were guarding the the area at that point. And the people that wake up early in the morning, vice versa. Does this make sense? But most of us, we we rise and fall with the sun. So it's our circadian rhythm. Now that's really important because we're talking about light here, okay? And light's effect on your body. Okay, so we're gonna, this is really, really important, very crucial when we're talking about why people can't sleep nowadays. So if light's coming into your eyes and it's telling your brain what time it is, and it's supposed to be the sunlight that's doing this, correct? Now we're, nowadays, what, are we, what do we have in front of us all the time that has the same blue light that comes out of this? Cell phones. Cell phones, mm -hmm. television screens, what else? Computers, yeah. right? Right outside, you look outside, you'll see some of the, the like the people that are like the, the street lights, right? Street lights, cars, right? All these things, that are, if you ever go into a grocery store right before you go to bed, I don't know if you ever go shopping at nighttime. So they, what, what is it like in there? It's like you're in a spotlight in there, right? So this is these are the, what's starting to. That's one of the big reasons that people are not being able to fall asleep because we're thinking, our brains are now thinking what? It's daytime still. I need to be up because this this right here tells your brain what's what time it is, and your brain then tells your body to what? Wake up! It's time to it's time to in, to go out and hunt and do all these things that we do during the day. Does this make sense? So. Circadian rhythms, very important. Now, I'm gonna talk about a, kind of a theory in, inside of our body, and it's gonna make, it's gonna make perfect sense. So it's, a, a, it's this thing called vitalism. Some of you guys might have heard of this. Anybody know what vitalism is? Maybe, we'll talk a little bit about it. Theory that the origin and phenomena of all of life depend on principle distinct from purely chemical or physical forces. Pretty much, there's a force inside of our body that tells our body what to do, right? You can call it nature, or, or you can call it God, or whatever. There's something inside of our body that regulates it and keeps it working. Does that make sense? Got it? So in chiropractic, we call it universal intelligence. It's an intelligence that you're born with. I'll give you an example of it. You cut your arm and you put a Band-Aid on it and you have to sit there and think about how to repair the wound. No, no, it's, it's just there. When you die, what happens? If you cut somebody that's dead, it, don't bleed. It, will, it will not repair. Yeah. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. So there's an intelligence inside the body when you're any living organism that when you're alive, it will tell the body what to do, okay? So that's the, this idea of vitalism. So principles of wellness, so this is a wellness office, right? All living things are composed of individual living cells, so pretty much we're just a bunch of living cells, right? Mm -hmm. And we put those together, you got yourself a body. If the cells are healthy, then you're gonna be healthy. If the cells aren't healthy, then you won't. Does this make sense? The cells need certain things, we're gonna talk about what those are, but cells never dysfunction without a physical, chemical, or emotional stressor. This is really important to understand, right? This is where all disease comes from. Because we just talked about a little bit about what creates uh, insomnia, because that's a disease, right? Your body's not, is adapting to that, to that stressor, okay? So sickness is a lack of consistent homeostatic cell function. So in other words, the cell, if it's functioning, you're healthy. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. If the cell's not functioning, that's called sickness or dis-ease, right? And the only reason that that cell's not gonna function is you have a physical stress, a chemical stress, or an emotional stress, right? And your body has to adapt somehow. Got it? Does that make sense? Okay, so the example of this is like, here, so disease is merely the intelligent adaptation to a toxically stressed environment. Um, yeah, okay, here's so. So a lack so a lack of health, just like darkness, is simply a lack of light. So I'm gonna skip this. A I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go too far into it right now because I, I forgot my analogy on that one right now. <laughs> I have, it's a pretty good analogy, but I forgot how to use it. So, anyways, um, here's what happens in the cell. So deficiency, not enough of the good stuff. In other words, so if the cell has everything. 
meets its needs, it's going to be sufficient, right? And if it doesn't have everything it needs, so we're thinking things like proper light, uh, nutrients, uh, water, nerve supply. We're, we can go into a lot, a lot of what those are. Nerve supply is on there. If it doesn't have those things, that's it's going to be a deficient cell. It's not going to function the way it's supposed to. If it's toxic, same same idea here, right? If there's toxicity inside of it, inside of the cell, things that aren't supposed to be inside the cell is inside the cell. Is it going to function? Not, no, it's not, right? Things like uh, chemicals, drugs, stress, foreign invaders, all these things can do it, okay? Here's what creates health in the body. You would have guessed this, right? So if deficiency and toxicity create disease, then sufficiency and purity in the cell will create health. Does that make sense? Okay. And what creates sufficiency? What, what are those things that, that, the, that the cells need? Nutrients, nerve flow, exercise the body, right? Positive mental attitude, rest. These are all the things that the, that the body needs. Purity, none of those bad things inside of, the, inside of the cell, right? Stressors, drugs, chemicals, foreign invaders. We talked about those things, right? Now, for those <laughs> that haven't heard my plant analogy, this is, this is a pretty. This is, a, this is my analogy of health, okay? In, in the in the in the body, we can use an, an organism like a plant to to determine this or, or describe it, right? So you got this. You got these wilting plants. They're right in, they're right inside of our uh, our garden here, right? So you, being a good gardener, will will try or trying to keep these plants from wilting. So what do you do? What do plants need? Water. Water, right? So how would you fix it? So, you, so would you remove parts of the plants to fix this thing? Only the dead ones. <laughs> the dead ones. Uh, would, you, would you try to put chemicals inside of this plant to, no. to, 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 to make it work better? No. No, right? So you look to the cause, right? So this analogy of that is if, you're, if your body's not functioning, would it make a lot of sense to just remo start removing parts out of it? Let's no. say your gallbladder's not functioning in the way that it's supposed to. Would it make sense to just, let's just rip it out of there? Why do we do that? Why do we do that to our bodies? <laughs> Why don't we look to the causes? We gotta look to the cause. This is all I'm trying to say, right? So we're looking here. Are they in the shade? Is the is the first somebody said? Oh, maybe they're in the shade. Maybe they need some sunlight. These plants need sunlight. So you give them sunlight, they wilt more. Uh oh. What's the problem there? All right, uh, maybe they're not getting enough water. Yeah. So you start feeding the plants some more water, and guess what? Uh, some of them got better. Okay, so some of the some of the plants ended up getting better. Now, the last thing you say, okay, well, some of them got better, but not all of them. Maybe the soil needs more nutrients, right? So you add, you add nutrients to the soil, a few more got better, okay? So you gave it everything it needed, you made it completely sufficient, right? Here was the problem though, they were toxic. The reason that they weren't growing is that there was a neighbor was dumping oil into the backyard. That's why, so that's called toxicity. So the same thing can happen inside, inside of your body. If you have these, these things that aren't supposed to be inside of that, inside of, this, inside of the cells, it's toxic. It's not gonna express full health, right? So is that a genetic problem? No, no, right? It's 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 a, it's a problem of the lifestyle of the environment, right? If you looked at the genes, different genes would be being expressed uh, in the in the unhealthy ones versus the ones that are that were perfectly healthy, right? Does that make sense? So a lot of times we look at people that have have a, have a disease process, and we look at them and say, oh, they're expressing disease, and, the, and we look at their genes and they say, oh, it's the genes, it's because you have those genetics, right? Is it a truly a genetic problem? Not necessarily, right? It's so we have this thing called epigenetics, right? So you might have the 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 we'll call it we'll use cancer for an example, right? You might have the gene that that's that's for cancer or creates cancer right here in your in your body. That's true. We all have them. Okay. Now, does that mean that you're 100% going to get cancer? No, right? Because we have this thing called epigenetics. If you li we've found out if you live your life a certain way, you 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 re avoid these toxins, right? Toxins, traumas, improper thoughts, and we give your body that all the things that it needs, then that gene will be covered up. So when your body goes to create the proteins that your body is is created with, it won't express it. In other words, you will not express the disease, right? So yes, genetics do 
have a factor, but it's not the it's not the end all be all. Okay, and specifically with cancer, they found out it's about 90 percent, 98 percent lifestyle metabolic factor, not so much to do with the, the, the yeah. And they have it in your genes. Exactly. So it's the environment. We're coming up with diet or whatever nutrition. Or exactly. Right. Here's an, another analogy. Right. So this is a great great lakes analogy. We're talking about just disease. Right. So you have massive amounts of fish coming up having cancer and washing up onto the shore. Right. So they're coming up with these tumors. Right. So what's the problem? Are the genes the problem here? So if you looked at this, what would you what would you think? Do you saw we saw all these fish coming up with all these all these things right here, right? What's the problem? Something in the water, something in the environments that's causing this. You look at our population right now. We've got a population of people that are get they're sick with they can't sleep well. They're getting cancers. They got all these other problems, right? So, what's the problem? Is it the genes? Is our genes? Are we we wouldn't have made it as a species this long if if it was the genetics, right? So there's something in our environment that's causing these issues, right? So we're an animal species just like them, right? So we wouldn't go in there with a bunch of little tools and stuff and just start ripping things out of these fish. We'd say, what the heck is caught? What's the cause, right? So that makes sense. All right. So this is the stress response, right? In our, in our environment, we are chronically stressed, okay? Physical stresses, chemical stresses, and emotional stresses that cause this. This is what happens inside of your body. I'm not gonna read every one of these, but one of the biggest ones I put here is increased feelings of stress, fear, anxiety, and depression. Would that cause you not to sleep well? Yes. <laughs> so, environmental causes, right? So we're gonna talk about some of those. Here are, are, are some of these these stressors in our environment. One of them happens to be trauma, right? Traumas, toxins, and thoughts are the three main categories. So some physical tra traumas, being overweight, okay? We talked about that and its effect on the body, right? What does it do? It, it, will, it will actually make it so you can't breathe well. That's obviously really important for sleeping. Uh, physical inactivity, so not moving. Actually getting exercise is a really important factor because, okay, so if you just think about this logically, right? Going back to like, our, our, our hunter-gatherer days, okay? We used to get up in the morning and we'd go out hunting for things, right? That's what our genes are used to, okay? We've gotten into an environment where we just don't move, okay? And this is pretty, this is pretty straightforward, right? If you like exercise, physically exert yourself a lot, you usually, do you feel tired afterward? No, you feel yeah. better. Well, you, you're good for a while, but then later on you're like, I'm a little tired. I think I need to sl I think I need to go rest, right? This is an, an innate thing, right? We call it innate intelligence. Our bodies, when you get that exercise, you will feel more tired later on. Yeah. It's just what the way that it works. Yeah. You got all, ever had a, like a really long, exhaustive day where you're like moving, like you're doing, well, just just giving. There's lots of moving furniture or something or doing something, right? You feel at the end of the day, yeah. you're tired, yeah. right? So this is a, a physical inactivity how it can relate to just not being able to sleep properly. Excess of light in the room, we talked about that, right? We got all this light in our room, guess what? Your body thinks it's daytime. That's, a physical, that's actually a physical trauma. Excess heat in the room. So your, bo your body temperature is supposed to drop into a certain, certain level. I think it's around 69 to 70 degrees. Um, not the body temperature, but your, your, your body will actually lower to a lower, to a lower blood, uh, temperature when you go to sleep. It, it lowers. So if you have the room and it's really hot, then guess what? Your body can't Bo cool down. Your body can't cool down properly. At the same time, it's just uncomfortable, yeah. right? So you, if you ever had like a hot summer night, this, I've, we all kind of experience this, right? Heat waves come around in California, 103 degrees, right? You're sweating, you're moving around, your brain's you're having these weird, crazy dreams, right? It's because your body's not cooling down properly, right? So we're going to talk about how to, how to, how to uh, fix that. You guys probably all figured that out. Smart, you're smart oh, people. Oh, I heard a yeah. huh? That's not a good idea. No, not very. Really, not the best idea either, right? Well, that's okay. Unless it's like you know, we're like freezing, and it's like. Oh, and I 
I'm cold right. too, but then I'll wake up warm and I'm thinking, oh, yeah. I shouldn't have this on. So this is what happens, Curious. right? So excess heat in the room can do it. Yeah. Toxins, so let's talk about some of those. Tobacco, right? So, so it actually can damage the blood vessels, right? So, so we're talking about cigarette smoke. Along with cigarette smoke, you're looking at all the other carcinogens and toxins that are inside inside of that, which obviously negatively affect your health, right? Um, they can, and alcohol. So you, some people think, okay, so this, my, this was my grandma. <laughs> uh, she she thought that you know uh, drinking you know a, a, a glass of you know beer or something like that right before you go you go to sleep helps her wind down, and so she's able to to, to not do sleeping pills. Right? So we're talking about sleeping pills in a second. Um, that might be true. You might be able to get into a better sleep, but it actually disrupts your sleep patterns. It actually it actually makes it so you can't get into that deep restorative rest that we were talking about, right? So if you're not getting that deep restorative rest, guess what? Your body's not going to repair the way that it's supposed to, right? Um, medications, right? So these are some of the medications that actually can cause insomnia, things like antidepressants, uh, Zoloft, Prozac, right? Alpha blockers, atenolol, beta blockers, these are things for your heart, right? Um, they're, supposed to, they're supposed to help your heart, but um, obviously they're not helping you sleep. Um, corticosteroids, right? ACE inhibitors, Cholinesterase inhibitors, statin drugs for cholesterol, all of these things can affect the way that you sleep, right? So, and why is that? They're medications that alter function of your cells, right? You're, so, if there are things that are creating, you're telling your, your cells not to function the way they're normally intending to, that's a stressor. Does that make sense? It's a stressor in the body. So, this is this is these are certain things that can actually create problems, right? Excess sugar. Uh, this is pretty simple inflammation, but also it's particularly like if you're gonna have a bunch of sugar before you go to bed. It's a stimulant, right? Mm -hmm. Would that make sense so that you wouldn't be able to sleep very well that night? Right, absolutely. Excess caffeine. A big one, right? <laughs> so our society is dependent upon, like a lot of people are dependent upon these these sugary, sugary and caffeinated drinks, right? The, you see the monsters and the Red Bulls and all these things that, that people consume on a regular basis. Coffee, right? So Starbucks on every corner, right? So these, so people are using these things because they're not sleeping well. But here's the problem. <laughs> Here's the problem. They keep on drinking these and then they can't sleep more. So it's like this cycle that continues and continues and continues. So this is something that we got to wean down to. So I'll, I'll, we're going to give the recommendation for caffeine a little bit later, but you can see why that would create a problem. Okay. Uh, foods high with trans fats and omega-6 fats. So that's like the, the, the inflammatory types of, of uh, trend, like fats, the not good for you fats. Fats, there's a lot of them that are really super healthy for you and you actually need them and help, they help you sleep better. But these are the bad ones. <laughs> we'll call them the bad ones. Uh, dehydration. Uh, your brain is what really controls the sleep, right? And if you're, well, you're, anyways, it doesn't matter. If your cell doesn't have the water that it needs, Anywhere in your body, will it function the way it's supposed to? It will, so therefore, you will not be able to sleep the way you're supposed to. Okay. Thoughts. This is most of us um, uh, can relate to this. So this is one of the more obvious ones when it's coming to how it affects your sleep, right? So high emotional stress. So you know, let's say that you're going through a, a breakup, or you know, you're you got you got a, a stress at work or something like that, and you're taking taking work home with you. You've heard of that taking work home with you. Highly emotional, highly stressful. Or obviously, if you're thinking, you're having these racing thoughts before you go to bed. Are you going to be able to sleep that well? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's really hard, right? I'm going to give you some really good tips on that a little bit later. Stay tuned. <laughs> moving, right? So that's another. It's like a simple one, right? We talked about like so. If you're if you're moving from one area to another area, you got the financial aspects of it. You're getting used to your new environment, so obviously that's a stress. Changes in your sleep routine, right? So going going in, again going to somewhere else, or let's say you you're you're sleeping, you know, we'll talk about like going into the weekend, right? You you're, you know, you're in, you're in the weekend. You stay up all, all late all night, one night, and then the next day, you have to wake up really early. It's, a, it's obviously just a stress, right? So these are the, the, the thoughts that can create it. I'm gonna take a sip here. Mm. Okay, so this is what traditional medical approach uses to help people that are that can't sleep. So things like anti, uh, antidepressants. 
benzo, uh, diazepines, lunesta, ambien, right? So these are the, the, the top medications for people that can't sleep. This is what they, they give to them, right? So some of the side effects include memory problems, mental and behavioral problems, including thoughts of suicide or homicide, hallucination, rash, taste problems, daytime sleepiness, or a hangover feeling. So that's an interesting one we're gonna talk about in a second. Anxiety, depression, headaches, nervousness, diarrhea, parasomnias. I wanna go into that in a second too. Allergies and death, right, so let's talk about this. Who wants any of these? <laughs> Nobody wants any of these things, right? So if you're thinking about like suicide or homicidal thoughts, this is not a very good thing, right? So, so, so obviously higher mortality rate, right? So you could actually end up dying faster because of these things. Um, daytime sleepiness. Okay, so they give you the medication because they, because why? Because you can't sleep and therefore you're having a, a tough day the next day, right? Does that make sense? You're not functioning properly. So if they, they give the people this and they still are actually having, they're actually feeling worse the next day. Mm -hmm. Would it make sense that you would continue on that medication if you, if you, if you are actually functioning worse the next day? Yeah. They've done studies on it. You av the average amount of, of t taking these drugs, you might be able to get to sleep or maybe a little bit faster. But they say about uh, 15, oh, sorry, tw about 20 to 40 minutes extra sleep a night that you can get using these medications. Mm -hmm. 20 to 40 minutes. Is it worth it? It's really, so I don't know, maybe, maybe it depends upon how you feel the next day, but if you're feeling like this, uh, probably not, mm -hmm. right? Um, and we're gonna talk about some more side effects and, and the, the long-term statistics of the people that use these versus the people that don't use them, that have insomnia, right? So addiction is obviously very common in these, in these drugs, right? So it can lead to overdose, which can lead to comas, right? So you can go into comas, obviously death, um, and be, you become addicted to these things. Now, greater incidence of depression with hypnotic use than with so these are just some studies that they've done on, on um, the drug the, the medications for these things. Uh, possibility that certain hypnotics might cause cancer in the skin as the journal of sleep. Uh, greater incidence of depression with hypnotic use than with placebo, so become more depressed. <laughs> um, relationships of vol and cancer risk, a Taiwanese population-based cohort study, Mayo Clinic proceedings linked to it. So Mayo Clinic did, did a thing, so higher risk of cancers, right? Um, risk factors for falls among elderly living people, so higher risk factors for falls, because again, that daytime sleepiness the next day, you're, you're just not, you're not functioning the way that you're supposed to. Uh, oh, I forgot parasomnia, so we're gonna talk about that. Um, motor vehicle crashes, so they link it to a higher, higher incidence of motor vehicle crashes. So obviously, these things aren't good. Now I wanna talk a little bit about these things. Uh, parasomnias, anybody heard of that? So these are things like, uh, if you take these medications, you could do things like, eat in your sleep, uh, higher sleepwalking, um, drive a car. Some people, they, I've heard these words, there are people who actually got in their car and drove around while they were sleeping. So, just some interesting side effects. I got a found friend who kind of, I don't <laughs> say that, but his doctor eventually put him on sleep drugs so he wouldn't get in the REM sleep and everything, and they're too expensive. He goes, well, it doesn't help me much. He goes, I started smoking weed, and it, he goes, I just smoke a bowl or two every night, and then, yeah. He goes, I'm down, I got better night's sleep with anything, than anything else. Yeah, so again, you're, you're, you're running to the risk with, with any kind of medication that way. It, was like, it depends, yeah. depends on how you use that specifically, but um, actually I don't know all the, all the studies on that, but you're running into the risk of you're not getting the proper, going into the proper amount of sleep, more like a, hip, more like a hypnotic kind of state. Um, simple solutions. So these are, these are we're going to start getting into the actual, like, how we could actually start taking care of this thing, right? The, without drugs, or without medications, um, you, we're going to talk a little bit about um, essential oil and things like that, which are, which have been fine, right? Routine and daily living, right? So these are the things that we want to do just on an every, everyday basis to start helping us sleep through the night, right? Get a routine, including the weekends, okay? So especially if you're if you have insomnia, right? If you're not sleeping well regularly, you, you need to create a regular sleep schedule, okay? So that means that seven hour window, you got to get it every single day, same same habits every single day, okay? Really important. So if I 
we go with 5.30, Monday through Friday, should we go with 5.30 on the weekends? Even on the weekends too. Yeah, Stay with it. Like Stay it. with it, right? Because that because you'll actually be able to get better sleep that way. Your body is it likes the repetitive nature of it, right? <laughs> yeah, okay, so get exposure to sunlight first thing in the morning, right? So you wake up. Ideally, we would wake up with the sun. Some of us wake up earlier than that, right? Because we just kind of have to because of our jobs and in, in, in our everyday environment. But ideally, we would be getting up with the sun and first thing in the morning we'd be getting that sun exposure and it would be telling us that it's daytime, right? So um, there's this thing called the juve light, um, which actually can help you, uh, it, helps, it helps on both ends. Before you go to bed and when you wake up, having that red light exposure, is, is where you get more of the red light means that it's either the sun's just coming up or the sun's just going down, right? So more of that red light versus midday, more blue light in the, in the atmosphere. So that, that red light in your eyes, you could actually use this thing called a juve. They, they sell them, they're like 200 bucks, but it's like a little, little, you can get like a full panel of it for your whole body or you could just do like a little, a little uh, handheld one, right? <clears throat> Here's how, okay, so if you're, if you're, in, if you're, if you have an insomnia, we have to reset your circadian rhythm. Your, your clock is off, okay, if you're, if you're, if you're not sleeping well. So how to reset it? You wake up 4.30 a.m., no napping throughout the day. You wake up at 4.30, do this if you can, and then you're going, your goal is 10 or 10.30 at night going to bed, okay? So if you do this for seven to eight, eight days straight, your body will start to get a new rhythm and it will be based upon the sun. And then after about 30 days, insomnia is gone, okay? This is the, this is the reset you get, okay? So this is a complete circadian rhythm reset. Exercise in the morning, we already talked about that, why it's important. And when you do it in the morning, it's, it, it mimics kind of that hunter-gatherer, what we used to do is we'd go, we'd go after the food, we'd, it would be the early morning, early rising, right? Avoid the stimulants, right? So caffeine, caffeine, may, it's, it stimulates your sympathetic nervous system, which is responsible for that, that wakeful feeling, right? right? So you're out, out there and you're chasing tigers, that's that sympathetic nervous system. Right? Or running away from tigers, I should say. <laughs> Unless you're really hungry. Uh, drink half your body weight in ounces of water during the day. Uh, cryopractics will allow proper nerve flow to the respiratory system, proper jaw alignment, and nasal alignment. So we could do things inside of the office here. We actually could help the jaw put repositioning. We could help the sinuses get the proper got proper airflow through into into the body. Also, the uh, making sure that all of the nerves are working properly in the body, so that your body is actually sending the proper signals to it. Right. So the nervous system sending the proper signals to the body. Okay. So that's why it can help. Acupuncture is also really good at actually just kind of energy balancing so if you're too much energy in the head maybe in the in the head it could help to clear it through I've had uh, times where I've had stress and I've gone to an acupuncturist and they have did these little needles on me and boom I, I felt like I was in like a hypnotic state <laughs> afterward I wasn't in a hypnotic state but it really really works <clears throat> so I, I like acupuncture <clears throat> this is what you need to do for your environment, right? So now we got the, throughout the day. So this is what your this is what we want our room to be like, right? So your bed should only be used for sleep and sex. Okay, why is this? We're we're training our brain to know that when we get into the bed, we're either doing one of two things, right? It's like a, if you're Pavlov's dogs where they ring a bell and then the dog salivates, you heard of this kind of thing? You're training the body to respond to that stimulus. So when you go to bed, you will want to train your body that when I hit the bed, I go to sleep. That's what we do. Does that make sense? So sleep and sex only. So things like uh, 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 like, like uh, doing homework or video games. Uh, if you're going to read, uh, that's like maybe the one exception. I prefer you read somewhere else, but if you if you read in bed, that's okay. Um, but we're talking about, you had a question? That was reading in bed. <laughs> reading. Because read. usually I read for 15, 20 minutes or something, I'm ready to go to sleep. Yeah, so if, if you're okay with it, um, obviously I, I don't want, so here's another thing. Um, you don't want to be reading, if you're going to be reading, uh, which I actually definitely recommend you read before you go to bed, because that's a good way to kind of wind down your brain. Um, you don't want to read anything that's too stimulating, okay? You want to do things like that are kind of like, um, um, 
when I say stimulating, I don't want anything like, like bad news or stressful, anything stressful on it, right? Kind of like easy, light reading, okay? Does that make sense? Something that's gonna make you tired. Um, maybe like, uh, what do we got? Like a book on what's really boring. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, what, yeah, so something like that, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Thanks, okay. All right, uh, proper EMF blocking, including turning off cell phones, right? So electromagnetic, frequency, electromagnetic frequencies have actually been shown to make it a little bit more difficult for you to sleep at night. So things like your cell phone. So if you got a cell phone, put it on airplane mode, right? That makes it so that those those Wi-Fi, those not Wi-Fi, but the um, the signals from the, the cell, cell towers aren't getting through directly to your phone specifically. Um, turning off your Wi-Fi at nighttime, also good, because you're not getting as much electromagnetic frequencies going through that. I'm probably gonna do an entire talk on, on EMFs and kind of what the, what they do, but. Um, yeah, Fred, like mine, can't really do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the, here's a couple of things that are really good. Defender Shield is a, is a company that you could use uh, that they sell products that like can can actually make it so those EMFs don't get into your household, right, or uh, affect your affect you as much. They also sell these things called Faraday cages, Faraday cages that are actually like these big metal things that you put over over your bed that make it so no EMFs get through. And you can actually test your free, the frequencies inside and out of it, and actually it actually works. Uh, here's a big one. This helped so much, right? Noise is a big thing, right? If you hear a, a loud noise, pretend like you're out in the out in back in nature, right? You hear you hear like a big loud rawr outside outside your door or outside of the cave. What are you going to do? You're going to probably wake up, right? Natural. So noise cancellation machines are really important. So we'll bring it to our environment, right? Cars going outside, your neighbor like playing guitar at 12 o'clock in the morning or whatever, right? So these are things that. Uh, this was one thing that I'm, I was dealing with is one of our na neighbors plays guitar kind of late at night and I was like oh my goodness so I just got a couple noise cancellation um, uh, machines they're really easy to get put it on right, right, right when we go to bed that's that white noise so you don't hear all those kind of abrupt loud frequency um, um, noises make sense yeah so these are, these are things that it can help with right cars driving sirens all these things especially if you live in a, a city really important okay so not noise cancellation is super huge light blocking curtains so you got so what, what we do have in our place is we, we just look on on Amazon or whatever you can go to well, anywhere where curtains are sold they have light blocking curtains right um, I recommend making it so it's truly blocking out the light right so I, I, uh, I actually velcro mine so I put Velcro on the inside and on the wall so that you could you could push it up against it so literally nothing's getting through, okay? So I recommend that. Um, make it, so making sure it's on top and on bottom. We used to have it where there's this, there's this big porch light that was right outside of our, outside of our, our room and we only had like a, like a shutter. And so there was so much light getting through, it was really hard to sleep, so we put that up there. It sleeps so much better now. Um, lights, light, light blocking curtains. Room temperature, 60 to 67 degrees Fahrenheit. Use a good blanket I put there, right? So how do we do that? Air, the air conditioner, right? <laughs> you could use an air conditioning unit. Um, proper and comfortable sleep position. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in a second, a future slide, but you actually won't be, wanna be lying on your left side, uh, left side sleeping, okay? And we're gonna talk more about that, why that is. Proper bed that does not off gas toxins. This is super important, right? So things like te like the like temper peating, some of some of these other uh, these other beddings or bed toppers have known to off gas toxic chemicals into into the air. Now, is that a really good thing to be breathing all night long? No, not really good, right? Also, things like um, and I, I'm not even sure if I put that on there, but how about like the the air quality in your home, right? So things like if you have mold in your house or, or toxic chemicals, things like that, and, and you're breathing it all night, obviously you're not going to be able to sleep very well. So make sure you're, you're getting a good thing like a uh, air filter, right? So things like the Molecule, M-O-L-E-C-U-L-E, 
really, really good product that actually filters the air, kills all mold toxins and things like that and, and viruses inside the air so you get a better night's sleep. Okay. Um, Where do you put that at? Does it go inside your unit or does it go So there's the uh, molecule is just like a, it's a standing unit so you, it, it'll do the air. There are other companies that do it where it filters that you could plug it into the whole air, air system. Okay. So, but I would rec definitely recommend a good air purifier for your home. Very important. Um, and I, I mean, there's all kinds of testimonials on that where people just aren't breathing really well. They're having allergy issues and things like that. And there's just because they're breathing toxic chemicals and mold and stuff like that inside their house all day long. And it's going to, it's going to congest your nasal passages. You're not going to be able to breathe. You're going to snore more, sleep apnea, not sleeping well. All these things can, can definitely be contributed just with that. Okay. Uh, here's a, okay. So remove, oh, oh and by the way, beds, pillows can become moldy pillow, the actual pillows. So check those and, and, and change them regularly. You're supposed to wash your pillowcase yeah. times a week. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Right. yeah. Wash your pillowcase. Yes. Right. yes thank you. Norwex. Very good. Yes. All right. Um, very important. I, I recommend the IntelliBed. So it's a, it's a, it's an, a bed that's very comfortable, um, doesn't off gas, things like that. So I recommend that one. I've done some studying on that's the one I recommend. Uh, remove the visible clocks to avoid anxiety about not falling asleep. That's an interesting one, right? So if you got a clock right in front of your face and you're sitting there and you're like, you wake up, oh crap, it's 12 o'clock, uh, 12.30, uh, okay, yeah. so so that's, oh, that's yeah, <laughs> get rid of the clock, get it out of the room, you don't need it in there, just get, just uh, if you if you need uh, a, a clock or whatever, just put it in the bathroom or somewhere close to you so that you, you can, you know, when you wake up, you'll be able to get it, right? Uh, humidifier for snoring, right? So if you're a snorer, um, a humidifier in the room can actually, uh, moisten the nasal passages and help you help you get get air into the into the into you uh, what about better. The diffuser is that yeah same kind of thing okay right so it's moist moistening the air okay right because um, if it's too dry then you're not getting enough uh, the the having moisture inside your nasal passages helps the air uh, airways simple solutions here's the winding down routine right so it's kind of small. All right, <laughs> grounding walk before bed. Okay, so so this is so where you take off your shoes and your socks and you go out somewhere where there's uh, grass, dirt, or sand. You walk around for about 15 minutes before you go to bed. So what does that do? The the earth actually has an electronegative frequency, which is actually going to pull toxins out of your body and and actually send um, antioxidants into your body at the same time. It's going to give you energy. Does that make sense? So do that before you go to bed. It actually can really help help uh, ground you. Um, hot bath, okay? So this will help sharpen the body temperature spike. So normally when you go to sleep, your body temperature lowers. So if you take a hot bath before you go to bed, when your body temperature lowers, it lowers faster and, and harder, and you sleep deeper. Isn't that fun? All right, a little, little, uh, little hack. Use Juve Light. We talked about that already. 15, 20 minutes before you go to bed. Here's here's a, a, a company that actually sells light blocking glasses. Um, I have a slide for it in a second here, but light blocking glasses. Okay, yeah, True Dark. So use that like pretty much when the sun goes down, you wear those glasses so that. It, let's say you are exposed to your cell phone or whatever, right? It actually will filter out a lot of that blue light so that you, you'll actually able to go to sleep faster, right? Pretty cool. Um, what else? Light blocking glasses. Now there are so your so your phones and TVs. Or so we're talking about there, there's things that you, or apps that you could put onto your phone that actually will filter out the blue light. I think iPhone already actually has it. It's a uh, it's like night mode or something like that where it'll start dimming out a lot of the blue light as you go to bed already. So they're they're already on top of this. But you can get it for your computers. Um, there's there's apps that you can put onto your computers that will actually get rid of a, a lot of that blue light when you go to bed and it'll do it on a timer. So just apps for your phones. Apps for your, uh, you could actually, there's things that you could put onto your TV, screens that you could put across it that'll actually filter a lot of that blue light too as well. So if you're, if you're, especially if you're having trouble sleeping. 
Get rid of the electronic devices too, at least two hours before bed. Same reason there. So if you need light, use candles, lanterns, bul red bulbs. So they, they sell these, these bulbs that are red and those, those light don't affect your sleep. They actually will put you to sleep better when you go to bed. So kind of look like a fish tank in your house, but it, it's, it's okay for you. <laughs> it's really good for you. Uh, avoid alcohol. Talked about, talked about that already. Uh, eating a healthy diet. We're going to go a little bit more on that later. Stop eating before you go to bed. So three hours before bed. So uh, the reason for this is because if you're digesting your food, it's taken away from the restorative nature of the sleep that you're going to be getting. Okay. Uh, here's another easy one. Empty your bladder before you go to bed. Who does this instinctively? I do this instinctively, right? We all, I think this is a natural thing, but if you're, if you've got a full bladder and it's going to wake you up in the middle of the night, that's not a good thing. It's going to disrupt your sleep pattern. Then you got to go into the room and if you have a normal light, you turn it on, boom, now it's going to be harder to go back to bed, right? Um, stop drinking too many fluids within an hour of bed. This, well, this is simple, right? all day long <coughs> and you still have to go to the middle of the night. <laughs> um, that's a hard one. Well, maybe, so, so, so maybe you're not sleeping, sleeping getting into that deep sleep right so if you're not getting into that deep sleep maybe your butt then you'll be you'll be more aware of it and you'll want to get up right so but I would definitely recommend stop drinking a lot of fluids right before you go to bed yeah. okay um, but if you try these other tips and maybe you'll be sleeping uh, through the night right sweet. read something relaxing before bed okay this is an easy one we talked about that uh, here's one for if you're a stress if you're stressed out before you go to bed right journaling super 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 helpful right so if you have it and you're like you're thinking about oh I got to do this tomorrow I got to do that I got to do this take out a journal physically write down all the thoughts write a checklist whatever you got to do but get it literally get that energy from out in your brain onto a piece of paper get it out of your head and uh, yeah so literally when that, what happens is your body says okay I, I, I got this I have the I have the task I'll do it tomorrow I got it okay but if you write it down it really helps here's some supplements that you could use magnesium up to 400 milligrams, ginkgo biloba, uh, glycine, valerian root, L-theanine, lavender, all these things that can, you actually can use before, like before you go to bed up to that much a day and actually can help you get better sleep throughout Essential oils, lavender, serenity. These are things that, like, serenity is one from doTERRA. You put it on your, on your uh, feet. You could put it on your, your pulse points. Doesn't really, you could diffuse it in a diffuser. That also help with snoring, stuff like that, right? Uh, honey, so there, here's the, our one uh, little uh, caveat to not eating before you go to bed, but like honey before you go, go to bed with mixing with some chamomile tea. So you don't, you want to do that like two hours before you go to bed. You can actually start to um, the honey, what it does is if you, especially if you wake up in the middle of the night, right? So if you're one of those people that wake up in the middle of the night, one of the one of the uh, reasons that your body will wake up is it's, it's lacking energy. So if you get honey and you put it in there, your all your cells will have all the nutrient, all the energy that it needs to sleep throughout the night. Mm. Fun little tip, right? Uh, diaphragmatic breathing, uh, yoga. So what is diaphragmatic breathing? It's when you actually will. Breathe in through the stomach and then expand the, expand the chest. Isn't that, that what that will do is actually will stimulate your parasympathetic nervous system, which will get you into that rest and digest function. Okay, jaw repositioning through a mouthpiece also really important. So if your jaw is all in an improper alignment when you're sleeping, guess what? You're not getting the proper air, pa air passage through, through there as well. So through a mouthpiece, there's also really cool exercises that you can do. I'll, I'll demonstrate it for you right now. So if your jaw is not positioned properly, you take your tongue, put it on the roof of your mouth like this, and slowly open your mouth. That is a jaw repositioning technique. So what does it do? It helps to actually strengthen the muscle, the proper muscles in the right, right ways to put your, put your mouth in the proper alignment. Kind of fun, right? Mm -hmm. Hypnotic inductions. Uh, so there's a little app on your iPhone called PZIZZ. -Z -Z, -Z. So it has these things where it'll take you through a hypnotic induction. It'll put you into a deep sleep at nighttime. So it'll take you with one of the five, four, <laughs> and you're out. So that's a really, uh, a really fun way to do it too. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to go into that because we're kind of short on time. This is the, the the website where you can get those uh, those true dark glasses called biohack.com. 
not affiliated with them, but they could do good stuff. Proper sleep position, right? So ideal left side sleeping has been shown to increase your circulation, increase lymphatic and lymphatic drainage, reduce heartburn, open up the airway. So here we go. Here's the reason why. When you're it just it just shows the positioning of the stomach if you're in one one way versus the other. Does this make sense? Yeah. Okay. I wonder if I'm more comfortable sleeping on the right side. I think I am. <laughs> So it's not 100, like if, if you're comfortable and you sleep really well on one side, this is not the end all be all at all, yeah. but this is just a, 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 re, a helpful tip. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we talked about some of the essential oils, but here's some more of them. Valerian root, clary sage, sweet marjoram, Roman chamomile. All these things are like derived from plants and nature and they were they have no toxic or, or, or side effects, right? Versus the sleeping medications, right? So I've given you guys about like 40 or 50 different sleep tips right all of those can be used prop I would I would I would I can't tell you guys what to do but I would use those before medications that's what I would do Ber bergamot uh, vanilla rose and geranium uh, jasmine I'm not going to go into the full diaphragmatic breathing but it's pretty simple you breathe in through the stomach and then you open up the lungs and you breathe out that way okay you repeat that for 30 minutes Talked about chiropractic. I'm not going to go into that just because, again, we're not uh, we're short on time. We talked about chiropractic, why it works for taking pressure off the nerves in those areas, allowing the proper nerve flow to happen. Okay, uh, this is somebody before and after. When we're talking about um, uh, chiropractic care and, and techniques. We're getting a, a, a lack of alignment in the in the neck, pro putting proper curvatures into it, getting heads aligned properly. Right. If we do these things, the body starts to line up the way that it's supposed to and the nervous system works the way that it's supposed to and you sleep better. Here's some uh, real simple things uh, like called what to eat. We talked about making sure you get the right proper nutrients. So half your body weight in ounces of water, particularly I like Kangen water. It's just that's the best one that I've found. Uh, Mediterranean diet. So obviously that's just high fats, a lot of fruits, lots of vegetables. Ketogenic diet's also really good, but you, uh, I'm not gonna go into, this is not a class about what ketogenic diet is, or because could, I could talk for three hours about that, uh, or what the Mediterranean diet is. Again, this is just some simple things that you guys can look up that are good diets to follow. If you're doing a ketogenic diet, I do recommend cycling in and out of it. So if you're gonna do it, I would go between the Mediterranean and the ketogenic, okay? Or the anti-inflammatory diet. These all are anti-inflammatory diets, by the way. Um, high potassium foods, apple cider vinegar, white tea, dark chocolate, juicing, all these things are really, really good for you. Um, what we're introducing into our office within the next month or so is this uh, science-based nutrition program, finding out exactly what's inside of your body as far as um, physical, any kind of uh, st like stressors, lacking nutrients, anything like that, and being able to determine specifically what those things are and to be able to introduce the right proper nutrients into it. I'll give you an example. So right here, this is uh, an example of some of the blood work that we would use, right? This is a hair sample that we'd be able to take finding out exactly if you're if you're too high in aluminum or barium or specifically any kind of any kind of things that you're high in and being able to to, to get you on the right uh, detoxification protocols to lower those things right so blue you can see this person had lead and mercury um, five and four and then we went went down to 0.4 and 0.7 after uh, after a period of detoxification of went from for in, within two months right so getting rid of those things also showing if you're low in essential elements like uh, let's say calcium or magnesium and, and actually pr providing those proper nutrients for you and you can see the before and after so so all this stuff the, all the nutrients and the supplements that we provide in the office have been tested with blood work to make sure that they're actually providing the people with with the things that it says it is right because a lot of people buy these these supplements right and they haven't been tested and what happens Happens. you're just you're ending up peeing them out right mm -hmm. your body's not absorbing them so it doesn't make a lot of sense to go to and get these things that your body's not absorbing if you're gonna spend money on on supplements make sure it's you can see that it's working. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, these are just more of the tests that we're run it's a very very in-depth program um, 
you can see, so a real specific, really easy one, right? So the test shows that you're vitamin D deficient. What are, what are the root, root, nutrients we would recommend? This is a really obvious one, right? Vitamin D. <laughs> and then you could actually measure whether, that, whether that's actually getting into your body before and after with blood tests, right? That's the gold standard. So um, this is just a, 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 a sample of what we could actually, what the, like the nutrients you would have in the, that first round. Usually it will taper off as you go through it because as your body gets more of those nutrients, you don't need as much of those as you go forward, right? <laughs> but usually in the beginning, you're, it's a lot of nutrients that your body needs. Um, and that's pretty much it. So free initial consultation for any, anybody that's interested in that, in that program or chiropractic, let us know. That's my little dude right there. Any questions? Not, I, I know it's a lot. I spit fired a lot at you. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. And those glasses better than if you have like a mask, a black mask. <clears throat> The glass, so, so that's why you get the glasses. So, so if, you're, you, if you wear a mask, you won't be able to see, right? So if you still want to go out and, you know, go out to the grocery store or do whatever those things you, you want to do are, or watch television no, or whatever you're sleeping. Oh, when you're sleeping. Yeah, you could, you could use a mask for sure. That would cover out, or that would block out all the, all the light. So that would be actually... But the glasses you wear when you're out there. Yeah, glasses you're using out, out in just everyday life. So what it's doing is that because we're exposed to all that blue light that's coming in oh, okay. on, from your televisions and all these other things, um, those lights will actually filter out all those, all those sleep blocking lights. But does it fit over your regular glasses or not? No? I believe like so. I believe so. Yeah. Okay, then I misunderstood that. And it was a good, uh, you bring up a good, uh, I just thought about with, with television, right? So, I and watching television right before you go to bed, particularly the news, right? Because <laughs> that is highly stimulating, right? Yeah. Highly stimulating, and at the same time, the frames per second that is going into your in, into your brain is actually a hypno. It's almost hypno hypnotic, right? So that that one that one will actually also alter sleep patterns. And definitely, in fact, I'm to the point. Even during the day, I know that there were. Yeah, but also just, just, just especially the news, not that good for you. <laughs> no, no, but I do watch. Yeah, <laughs> cool. Any other questions? No, very interesting. Cool. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to be having another talk next month, and I haven't quite decided what I want to talk about. But uh, we're so the second Tuesday of next month. If you want to come back, we'll be talking about some more stuff. All right. Okay. All right. But you'll be hearing more about that. Cool.